Hi, I'm Sheetal. Welcome to 3TV, a podcast where three techies banter. It's a podcast where you can explore tech in the non-tech way. It is about how tech and the economics behind the tech impact us today and in the future. It is full of information, fun facts, common sense, and is actually spoken in a language that everybody can understand. Today, we're doing a special, which is a Christmas special for you. And the way we thought about it is that, you know, imagine that every year Santa goes around the globe delivering gifts, right, to kids um, below the age of 15, I would think, who, who still are, um, who all of us believe in Santa, but who really believe in the whole power of Santa and believe in the fact that they should leave out some cookies and milk for Santa and things like that. Now, if we have 1.5 billion kids approximately around the planet who need these gifts to be delivered every in one night, right? Because um, in one night, Santa goes around delivering um, the gifts on that one night. We thought we'd talk about how um, the ecosystem for Santa works, right? And can you imagine the aspects of the ecosystem, um, Nilesh? It would be research and consumer understanding because he has to know 1.5 billion kids, has to know who was naughty, who was good, who did good, how well did they behave, all of that. Then he has to do demand supply analysis because he has to figure out what their gifts and their requirements are and see how he's going to build that. Um, there is data analytics which has to be done uh, because there are names being added every year and every day and every month. So you have to keep up with the updated data. You have to make sure for demand supply production happens on time. So his elves need to work I don't know how many hours and non-stop. Um, he has to follow compliance and legal. We don't know how Santa is going to get slapped with a GDPR um, <laughs> suit very soon, right? Everybody is very worried about the personal information that is lying everywhere else. His IT infrastructure, his HR policies, his funding, <laughs> his marketing, and the biggest being supply chain, right? How does he deliver all of this? So we thought we would do this entire piece. Of course, I've not added the two fun bits. One is Santa is the only one who's built a recession-proof business. None of our large businesses have built a, built a recession-proof business. And the other thing that I find strange is Santa has done no succession planning, right? So, <laughs> I mean, so if Santa dies tomorrow, uh, I think we, we might have a global issue. So Santa needs to do succession planning, I think. So these are some of the aspects of Santa's uh, ecosystem that we should cover today. And let's understand how tech can make Santa's ecosystem work even more efficiently. So we done any thoughts? Yeah, so I kind of went back and said that, you know, like since I am I'm charged with the responsibility of figure, coming up with some interesting paradoxes, I said that, you know, let's figure out if there is a really a paradox that talks about Santa. And lo and behold, there is one, you know, it's called Curry's Paradox, apparently. So it's it's the most it's the most ridiculous thing. It's if it basically it says if this statement is true, then Santa exists. It's as arbit as that. And I'm not even going to bother to try and explain what it is. All the people who want to read about it and who want to go into this whole aspect of whether Santa exists or not can read about it. And and it's completely crazy. And it's it's got a lot of alphabets. It's got a lot of numbers. It's got a lot of theorems attached to it. But essentially, people have given it a lot of thought. Samiran, so, if, if that's the paradox, then I'm going to say, if this statement is true, then I am the Statue of Liberty. Uh, it, 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 it is literally <laughs> that. It, it is that. I mean, so, it, it is, so I think you, I think it's the question of fastest finger first. Is Somebody just said it and it became a paradox. <laughs> it's, it's just nuts. No, so I think the one thing that has really always intrigued me is the fact that, you know, this chap just goes around the world, you know, in one night and does this humongous amount of work. So what does he really do the rest of the year? So, you know, and then I got myself thinking, guys, and then I thought, you know, I, what could be the parallel in terms of this complex logistics? And the only example that I could think of was the Bombay Dabba Wala. 
So I, I, I figured that this guy must be practicing with the Bombay Dabbawalas for 364 days, refining his skills. And come 365 days, Christmas, boom, you know, he manages to do everything. <laughs> but I, I, I mean, uh, I think uh, it's very interesting that we picked this topic up because in just to share in terms of, like you said, uh, Sheetal, the, the tech that's involved, uh, just the requirement gathering, I mean, who knows, you know, uh, the good boy from the bad boy, who wants what, how do you get into this? And, and there'll be some, uh, just tons of stuff written about it in terms of quantum super positioning, and he must be traveling through wormholes to be in different places. There are, uh, there, uh, there must be some <laughs> crazy technology for elf cloning, not just presence, because now you need people to pack, right? So there's tons of stuff that people have written about that, you know, that, and uh, I, I, I actually thought Santa was this great figure of goodness. I didn't realize he was a icon for technology <laughs> until I started reading about this episode. No, but no, the kind of the kind of stuff that is going on, I mean, I would think his technology is way ahead of any of ours, <laughs> right? So I think he lives in the fifth dimension. Everybody keeps talking about these multiple dimensions, uh, you know, especially like the Doctor Strange stuff. I think he lives in multiple dimensions, and maybe th you know what happens in one dimension is actually one whole year, while it is a, a day in our dimension. I don't know. It could be any dimension. <laughs> no, no. I, I was, I was just thinking. I mean, uh, the the each and every element when you try to think of it and see a technological parallel, uh, you, you know, you, you the, probably you can't think of any any system that could scale or give uh, those kinds of results to to kind of deliver uh, what Santa delivers. So I was just thinking you mentioned about, you know, who was good and who was bad. So when when we were building this whole blockchain stuff and, you know, in the blockchain, you need to figure out malicious nodes and, you know, uh, benign uh, faults versus malicious faults, who is who is trying to uh, spoof the system and stuff like that. You, uh, you know, the one thing you can do is build a reputation management, right? So it started from the peer to peer network days whereby every node had a reputation. Uh, and it still fails, you know. I mean, you you can't figure out whether this was a benign thing or someone was being malicious, and you may term that person as bad reputation, right? So, uh, but here you have to get it right. I mean, you can't you can't get it wrong. <laughs> there is no option. So, fantastic reputation engine, uh, fantastic recommendation engine. You know, it, it can't be the recommendation like you know, like like uh, if if you bought rice, probably you're going to buy a cooker now kind of stuff. It has to be <laughs> no, 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 no. It has to be a very, very deep, you know, uh, recommendation engine. So you know, the funny thing here, Nish, uh, is that so the, you just imagine the beauty of the system is that of course he knows who's good or bad, but look at the problem from the other end. So if I get something. I feel that, oh, I'm a good guy. But if I don't get it, it's not Santa's fault. It's actually my fault because I was a bad person. So that's the perfect system, right? Because it can't go that, wrong. <laughs> that, that, that is what Sheetal said, right? Recession proof. So funda is every year, whatever 1.5 uh, billion kids, I'm not too good with numbers. Sheetal will give, give, give the number. But all those kids, whether they get or they don't get, they will still believe in Santa and they'll think that they are, it was their own fault. But Amazon doesn't have the, those kind of liberties. If you don't get the parcel, the fault is Amazon. <laughs> it's not your fault. Absolutely. So, absolutely. so, so other, other thing that came to mind, like you mentioned Dabba Wala, you know, so I was thinking just a parallel and uh, was, uh, you know, uh, Pista House Haleem, right? So I, uh, I discovered it a few years back and I've been ordering Haleem from Pista House since then during the Ramadan months. And uh, uh, it has become a case study in supply chain management, right? And it is nothing compared to, you know, this whole Santa logic that we are talking. So just to give you the figures, uh, they process something like 10 tons of meat every day during that period, 10 tons, right? And they start their process. And, and this, is, this is something, it's a perishable good, right? You have to cook it in time, deliver it and finish it off, get the fresh uh, stuff again and start cooking. So they start at 4 a.m. it seems, finish cooking at 1. Uh, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. it is put in those boxes. And from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. it reaches airports and you know places from where it flows out so that uh, everyone gets it before uh, breaking the fast, right? Across India, 
and now they also have middle east so and this uh, once they were able to perfect this system and it it doesn't fail. i mean i have tried it for 3 4 years and it has not failed ever so uh, uh, just think of it this is this has become a case study and now just put that scale to 10 times you know of delivery maybe, <laughs> uh, maybe 100 times or 1000 times yeah, or 10000 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so samiran here's some stuff right so here's i think let's imagine a world where we tech can make santa's life easy right so from a from an understanding of children point of view i think ai will do a fantastic job right for um for santa to be able to understand kids so imagine if you could use artificial intelligence which uh, crawls through and figures out which child is good, which child is bad, then that would reduce the workload on Santa and his team considerably. So from a from a research consumer understanding point of view, I'm sure he does. I'm sure he must be doing focus groups. I uh, as a true researcher would like to believe. But you have this, a job. You have a job. I have a job. Maybe I should apply to Santa. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but so AI could help with research and consumer understanding. What do you think would work better with, I don't know, what kind of infrastructure? Uh, think about it. What kind of servers would Santa have to have all of this data? I don't know. So <laughs> let, let, let me, let me, I, I have to take a stab at it because I told you, we, I, I personally, me and Samira, we love decentralization, right? So I think the first thing Santa needs to do is be on a decentralized network and essentially create, you know, uh, call them clones or call them uh, decentralized versions so that these master nodes are scattered across maybe one per country and then you have a hub and spoke from there but decentralization is the key right now i think one thing that must be killing santa and his elf is too much centralization <laughs> it has to be distributed computing i was just wondering what kind of server capabilities right and where would these servers be and <laughs> how would what kind of cloud are we talking about? So, no, so, so that, it that, has that, to be that, decentralized and edge. Probably Samiran <laughs> will love to talk. Edge no, no, I mean, I, basically, it, this really means that every kid must be a, a node, actually. Oh, you know, no. they, <laughs> so basically, they, they have to process everything and it, it's just kind of flying. It, it, it's just completely crazy. I don't think uh, it, it's an imaginable situation also of what uh, how this is even... Uh, possible to do at, at that point in time because typically whenever we talk about AI we talk about of course historic data we talk about predictive data and things get collected and all but here we are talking about the whims of children okay and uh, I mean I don't know I mean if, if, I mean if that cloud will I think put all the pollution and climate change and fog on the planet to shame it will be so <laughs> foggy and cloudy <laughs> So, so since since we are speaking of uh, AI, so I thought we, uh, I mean, there has been so much talk about it. And I know Samir and Sheetal, we, we spoke that probably we might do even an episode talking about this is chat GPT. Okay, so I, I have to I have to touch upon it because from an AI perspective, you know, so I was reading an article and it was a fantastic article. One guy, what he did was he said, let me test chat GPT. Will it actually put the aim was very simple. Will it put developers out of business? Right. So now we are looking at Santa and will a uh, chat gpt kind of thing work so what he did was he told chat gpt uh, that he wants to build a application to do to do list application uh, so the first version came out then he realized okay he needs to give some more instructions i mean that was okay it was not uh, chat gpt's fault so he gave an instruction that to do list you can remove task add task uh, you need to have a and it has to be a database so persistence of the data has to be there over a uh, cloud and all and lo and behold, a code was churned out by, by chat GPT bot and, and he tested the code and then he analyzed the code. So it was a very interesting analysis. So what he did, he said was the simple answer is no, chat GPT will not put developers out of business. It gave a working code. The issue was that uh, the learning mechanism of chat GPT is based on the web only, right? So what it did was that it found out pieces of code which were written for a to-do application. And this guy had already done a Google search behind it, right? Separate. Mm -hmm. So essentially, every developer in the world goes to Stack Overflow. So Stack Overflow goes down, then developers are in a problem. 
so everyone goes there figures out a good solution then talk to you know have a uh, you know a discussion group there with developers to figure out the best solution so what he said was that today chat gpt the state it is and it's a fantastic uh, thing but all it is doing is it's it's probably a, a one level filter above google search so if i had to do search i would have done 10 more things and reached where chat gpt reached chat gpt directly reached there that's all so it went to stack overflow figured out multiple code snippets took the code snippets so you would also do that and reach there but chat gpt was a uh, a better solution but it was not churning out code itself so it's a long way to go so if chat so chat gpt is definitely not on list of santa <laughs> it's not going to help okay so that's not going to help santa i'm just wondering that from a data integrity point of view and gdpr compliance point of view i wonder what uh, what he will have to do to make sure that every child imagine if you know how a child has behaved throughout the year whether the child has been good or bad uh, it is the most personal kind of data which has been voluntarily given right uh, to to santa i wonder what gdpr compliance will have to say about that and how so, the world is going to react about it um, so i think santa must be having some kind of a gajni complex you know because i think he must be self erasing or something because there is no <laughs> other way i mean he cannot get past, <laughs> unless of course gdpr he has let us assume he doesn't have gdpr exemptions but i think it's it's just like you know it like this comes in his brain and poof goes out so it's like then and there in the moment and it is just like a self erasing mechanism so i no, think no very true otherwise he is not delivering anything in europe for sure for sure yeah. <laughs> there is just no way <laughs> okay so that's that's fun now let's think about the delivery and the supply chain mechanism right so one of the pieces of statistics that i was reading up is that if he has to deliver about 2 billion parcels across the globe in one night then he needs to travel at the speed of 2000 kilometers per hour okay now if you think about 2000 kilometers per hour which is and he travels what about a kilometer above the surface of the earth i would assume because he's going around um so i'm assuming he doesn't need to worry about visas and passports and um uh, things like that but what what technology will allow him to travel at 2000 kilometers per hour and make sure that it doesn't burn out in outer space it doesn't we've not been able to get anything out there so any stabs at that so i i am i am going to go with one definitely firstly his driver whatever i mean uh, the driver has to be tom cruise uh, <laughs> mission <laughs> top gun part 2 he has to break uh, the the 10 g's right so essentially he's going 10 times the speed of sound roughly uh, about okay. maybe 9 or so so he needs his pilot has to be tom cruise uh, no no one else can survive those bunny g's sorry <laughs> what are your thoughts this, this is literally like i mean it it, it is like uh, you you actually traveling at the speed of thought right so i mean yeah. i think there are some fiction movies that were made like that that you you kind of imagine a place and you land up there you know it's 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 literally like that because i don't think this is i think the point at which physics stops making sense because you you, you can't be uh you know traveling at that you know i don't think materials exist that can make spaceships like that and i mean let alone rudolph i mean i don't think rudolph <laughs> is going to be i mean he will have more than a red nose i can tell you that if he's traveling <laughs> at that speed <laughs> so i think there is something but i can tell you that people uh though i think obviously some people know better because every year you know norad which is the north american aerospace agency they they publish a tracker so there is a norad tracker for santa so it tells you where santa is and i think even google has that and uh, i i still remember that virgin atlantic had done this amazing campaign where they had this 24th december flight and uh, they were working with microsoft they had actually uh, uh, shown uh, santa being tracked and santa lands on the plane and comes in and welcomes them and gives them all microsoft products and all that so uh, i mean clearly some people know how this works but it's obviously <laughs> a very very well kept secret <laughs> so, okay so i think 
you you were mentioning something which made a lot of sense which was what five dimensions or something i don't know the fifth <laughs> dimension <laughs> i keep see we keep talking about the fact that we are just living in a certain space right but there are multiple multiple dimensions i don't know if you're a f- fan of um mib but in mib also he keeps talking about multiple things that can happen so if he doesn't put the tip something will happen if he puts the tip something else will happen right so there are parallel universes going around and i'm just thinking maybe santa is living in different universes and is delivering to us in a universe which is faster than ours but we think it's happened overnight so that could be a fun way to think about it uh, from a supply chain point of view i had a thought you remember honey i shrunk the kids uh, yeah. the movie right where he's talking about and then there's another one where the everything I becomes outsized and all that yeah so imagine if you had a nano toy maker right and um, such that the toys grow under the trees as <laughs> they get so you just have to have one nano toy maker which makes life much easier i uh, i was reading about it in i think one of the articles and i thought that was fascinating imagine having a nano toy maker and just leaving gifts and then everything just becomes overnight the gift it is supposed to be that would be it grows awesome. grows into grows into the gift it, it is supposed to be grows into the I, gift yes I, i it it has to be something like that you know it has to do something on its own self own. self <laughs> growth or self yeah that's though i had a very interesting thought saying that i don't know if you figured this but santa comes in too many forms shapes etc the the definition oh, of santa a, there is a tall dark and handsome version of santa is it correct uh, okay. oh wait I'll, i'll tell you a funny story on that and i will be politically incorrect today and replace your political incorrectness on this uh, samiran but uh, i was just thinking so the way we see santa the chubby guy with the pink cheeks etc is a coca cola creation right yeah um they created the first the first illustration of santa to use in their advertising so while they did not really own christmas they kind of created the image of santa in our heads uh, i used to work uh, in retail and then we also used to celebrate um christmas at the stores but it's very difficult to find nice rotund chubby cheeked white uh santa claus is for india right uh think of all of india and you can't just find that many santa clauses so we would have santa claus in all shapes sizes and forms and i would always think that it might shatter some child's imagination of what santa is so with 3d printing technology coming into play and now we are talking about 3d creating organs and all of that imagine if you could 3d print santas which looked exactly the same and could be allocated one santa per country so this is india santa and this is bangladesh santa and this is you know norway and this is somewhere else and you just have santas across but the santa looks the same in each of the countries that would be really keeping a child's imagination uh, you know intact or at least his expectations from whatever he's read or she's read completely intact um that might be a fun thing to do <laughs> So I'm going to end this episode on my favorite topic, which is Santa in the metaverse. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> metaverse is blockchain. It has to be right. It has to come in because yeah. um, today, uh, why should we have to go anywhere, feel anything? I mean, you could feel everything in the metaverse, and Santa could deliver your gifts in the metaverse, and you could utilize the gifts in the metaverse, and that would be. uh completely game changing so while while we all have our physical gifts etc but i think gifts in the metaverse is something that might change and and my belief is that if in the real world um christmas is a couple of 100 billion dollars uh as a business then i think in the metaverse if the metaverse really takes off uh, the way it is planned to take off you could have a parallel economy which could be another couple of 100 billion dollars right so um technology would help us also build another parallel universe which could be very very large in the metaverse and that i think is something i'm looking forward to christmas in the metaverse you, you are sitting in dublin and really enjoying a white christmas i will only be able to enjoy the white christmas in the metaverse nilesh no no i'm i'm whitewashing the walls of my house right now 
<laughs> as white as I can get. <laughs> So I'm going to enjoy Christmas always in the metaverse because then I can live every dream that I've had of a white Christmas uh, <laughs> in my life. <laughs> Very true. No, no, I think yeah. I think meta metaverse uh, is, would solve a lot of problems for Santa. So with okay. you on that, I think decentralization, metaverse, couple of couple of our favorite, you know, uh, you know, technology pieces of 2022, which uh, I think, yeah, did well. So they they do remain still very relevant for Santa also. So completely agree with that. Uh, but I, 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 but I also think that uh, while we have talked so much about the technology, we should not take away uh, the the fun and the uh, the physical aspect of it, especially the eating. Uh, so I think that's not going to, so I know, I mean, this is more of just for the, the, the kids out there, you know, it, this is a time to go out, have fun, enjoy yourself, be with your friends, family, whatever, have a great time, have a great Christmas, uh, have a great new year. And, you know, I think, yeah, and uh, maybe yeah, have, have a good time, basically. And we will definitely see everybody soon in the new year, right? So this brings us to the end of uh, a special episode of 3TB. Uh, this was a great year. Uh, I think uh, we saw our our you know listeners grow, uh, and and uh, thanks a lot for that. Uh, I hope uh, you keep liking our banter. Uh, please share the episode. That is how uh, this this whole uh, endeavor of our uh, our passion project will grow. Uh, we are available on all major podcast platforms. Uh, if you are an Apple podcast, then please do leave a rating and review. It uh, it helps the podcast grow. We will be, uh, uh, you know, starting uh, our season three. This was, as I said, a special. Uh, and, and we will come back to you uh, next year with some very interesting formats and interesting episodes. So wish you a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. Happy 2023, everyone. See you on the other side. <laughs>